Nicholas. Well, uh, good morning, everyone. It's good to see so many familiar faces here today. Hope you are uh, enjoying your trip to, to Brazil so far. So I have, um, I have prepared the presentation to you. Uh, initially, I recap about what the E2 is. I, I suppose the majority of you know it uh, already, but let's just uh, recap and then uh, program status, okay? Let's make it uh, an inter interactive uh, session. Let's make the questions as we go, okay? Very good. So, uh, the E2 program is composed of three members uh, as compared to the current EJETs with uh, four members. 175, one additional row. 190, same capacity. 195, three additional rows. Uh, initially, we thought of making the 190 one row bigger, but in our advisory board sessions, the customers told us don't change the size, this airplane has uh, the perfect size. We are keeping uh, range on the 175, that's a regional airplane, we believe it has perfect range. The 190 has gained 450 nautical miles as compared to the current, because of course it shares, because it has a bigger wing derived from the 195, so more range. And the 195, <coughs> and I have a, I have a, let's say, a, uh, I have big news for you today, I'll tell you at the end, but these uh, numbers here are being revised, but I'll leave this uh, to the end. But the message here is, with three planes, we are covering a bigger market segment than the current family. We are upgaging a little bit, and we are adding more value to the customers, either in terms of uh, capacity or range. So it's not only if you burn maintenance costs, it's also value in terms of capacity and range that is being offered by the E2. Okay. The as uh, I, I saw your your question, Stephen. Indeed, the um, E2 is much more than a re-engined <coughs> airplane. It's, uh, it's a very different uh, airplane from the current uh, generation. New engines, completely redesigned wings, completely new wings, new landing gears, make room for the bigger um, engines, full fly-by-wire. The current generation is by wire, but not full fly-by-wire. Uh, in between, we have designed the Legacy 500 and the KC 390 that are full flyby wire. So, with a very low risk, we are introducing full flyby wire to the E2. Uh, new empennages, new beautiful redesigned uh, interior. So, the commonality from E1 to E2 uh, was driven much more in terms of pilot commonality philosophy commonality, uh, so that for pilots and mechanics, they, they feel it's, it's the same family. But we have introduced, introduced all new technologies required to make this airplane as efficient as a clean sheet design. So uh, yes, we have commonality of, to leverage all the customer base we have on the current family but without you know, falling short of any new technology that would bring efficiency in terms of your burn costs, passenger appeal, connectivity, and so that's, a big, uh, that's a, a big point for the program. Uh, did I forget something? Well, it's important because the 195 will have so many more passengers. We are beefing up the uh, air management system and the APU so that Pull down times, comforts remain the same. We have selected uh, we have selected GTF. Uh, we are very happy. Continue to be very happy with the selection. We believe not being the first application of the engine uh, is proving very positive, uh, in the sense that 
as in any new development, there are teething problems, but they are being solved uh, before, let's say, our flight test campaign and before our entry into service. So we're very happy with the technology and, and with the selection we made. Uh, new design, the passengers love the four abreast cabin, no middle seats. Many of our customers uh, tell us that the, their passengers prefer the jets to the narrow bodies. And we have uh, data from KLM, JetBlue, so people that operate e-jets and the narrow bodies, they have their surveys and uh, the e-jets come first in terms of uh, passenger uh, acceptance, let's put that way. So, uh, in any case, uh, because it's a new generation, we are revamping the interior. One big modification is bigger overhead beams, so that every passenger will carry his uh, roll-on uh, baggage. So one per capita, which is the benchmark, that's the maximum the industry offers. Um, currently, we can carry around 65, 70%. So we are going up to one per passenger. Well, new style and uh, a new first class option, which is the staggered seats that I will show you uh, in a moment. Uh, this is a view. Uh, we have a mock-up. That's a picture of our mock-up. So on top of the two plus one option, we are offering this staggered seat arrangement for first class. Big pitch from 50 to, I don't know, 56, 58 inch pitch in a 120, 130 seat uh, airplane. So it's, it's really, uh, I would say, a breakthrough. And we don't, the airlines, they do not, leave, they do not uh, lose seats by doing that. Because even though the pitch is bigger, it's, it remains a four abreast arrangement. So you trade a three to four abreast and a bigger pitch. Uh, so uh, we are in the near future, let's say, start to, to really uh, offer this uh, possibility to the airlines. But uh, as of now, there are airlines quite interested in this arrangement. That's, this is another view of the standard uh, solution. In-flight entertainment. So um, we intend to make selections about uh, in-flight entertainment in the second half of this year. Of course, this is a technology that evolves very fast. And we are discussing with uh, several players, and for sure, we will uh, offer a portfolio of, uh, of alternatives, wireless on board, uh, internet access, in seats, uh, IFE, and most probably other alternatives that we will, that we will manage. Uh, we are working on devices where you can, let's say, clip your uh, iPad or equivalent uh, device uh, to the seat. So there will be alternatives where the airplane provides uh, internet or provides content and the passengers can really use their own devices as, as displays. Uh, cockpit commonality and pilot commonality, that's a big plus. Uh, today we have delivered more than 1,200 airplanes. When these airplanes enter service, we probably will delivered, we will have delivered more than 1,500 planes or more. You imagine 10 pilots per plane, so it's a huge pool of pilots that current airlines, uh, airlines that currently use the E1 or even other airlines, they can draw from uh, a pool of pilots. Uh, that with only three day transitioning course, we'll be able to fly the E2. So no scene required, three day, uh, differences training and you'll be able to fly the E2. The avionic suit is the Primus Epic 2, so it's based on the current, but bigger displays, bigger processing capability, bigger memory, 
uh, you can do you you will have uh, movie maps uh, charts uh, synthetic vision and other functionalities that the current uh, avionics uh, do not support but same sim symbology same colors so pilots will feel at home E1 pilots will feel at home on this earth. We believe that's a big uh, competitive advantage. Head-ups displays, as we have today, we do have dual head-up displays on the E1 as an option, and we'll do the same here uh, still as an option. Uh, in terms of um, evolution, while the E2 is the next commercial airplane after the E1, in between, we have developed four new platforms. Fino 100 and 300, these are very different platforms, even though many people believe there is a small variation between the two. They are very different. Legacy 500 and KC 390. I'm just showing the platforms, so I'm not showing the, uh, the Legacy 450, because those are very similar. So, four new platforms. And so our, you know, technology, our engineers, they have been uh, improving, uh, adding new processes in all aspects. I, I gave the example of fly-by-wire. Those two planes are full fly-by-wire, and so very low risk uh, we are adding this technology to the E2. And the same applies to maturity and robustness. That's a big goal of this program, to make the E2, to make a, a flawless uh, entry into service of the E2. Uh, airlines that are flying the E1, which is a very reliable airplane today, 99.4 uh, dispatch uh, uh, schedule reliability. Um, of course, they want the E2 to be at the same level. Uh, and so we're working very hard in terms of the robustness of design and maturity. This applies to products and services. So, uh, structural repair manual, master mail, all these need to be at a good, uh, mature stage at entry into service, which is typically not the case. Those manuals, they get, you know, richer and, and, and bigger as the airplane is in service. So our goal is that, for instance, the structural repair uh, manual, which will be electronic, by the way, uh, is as rich as the E1 manual is today, so that the, the, the airlines do not see, let's say, uh, a decrease in their ability to keep the airplane flying when compared to the, to the uh, reduction. Very good, fuel burn improvements, so we're keeping the numbers uh, we have announced since the beginning of the airplane. Fuel burn per seat reduction, 24% on the 195, 16% on 90, 16% on 75. So very uh, significant uh, reductions. It's a combination of uh, engine, wings, more seats, uh, full flower wire. Basically, these are the main drivers of, uh, of this reduction. Yeah, this um, chart shows that. 11% for the engines. Yes, the engines on the bench, they will deliver a bigger reduction, but they are bigger, heavier. So 11% is the net benefit from the engines. 1.5% full flow by wire, 3.5% the new ones. But uh, because we are revisiting many systems of the airplanes on top of the, the engines and because the life cycle cost is an important goal, life cycle cost reduction for the, for the family, uh, we can provide a significant reduction in maintenance costs. Uh, I show here direct maintenance cost per seat, 20% reduction on the 195, 15 reduction on 90, reduction on the 175 as compared to the current family. So there are many questions. Uh, what happens now that the oil price is lower and so forth? As Paulo said, of course, airplane decisions are long-term decisions. It's not the oil price today that will really affect that. But uh, our 
second generation ejects is much more than just fuel burn reduction. This is our fund chart, uh, the COC fund chart. Cost per trip, cost uh, per seat. We have centered the 190, uh, then the graph with the 190 at the center. Uh, you see the current, genera current generation, let's say, curve of efficiency and the new generation curve of efficiency. So we are improving on a cost per seat and on a cost per trip basis. And what is really remarkable, we think, is that the 195 E2 is now at about the same level of cost per seat of a much bigger airplane, like the A320neo. And why and how can we do that? Well, because they're changing only the engine and we are investing much more. We're changing the wings, the bar wire and everything I have described. So we have um, became on a relative um, comparison, we became or we came closer to the narrow bodies because they are investing less in their new generation airplanes. Is that clear? Um, um, we will have you, you guys will have a full presentation about services and support by Johan Bourdain that works in our in our team. He's responsible for services and support. Uh, but I always like to show a couple of slides uh, about that. So on the on the E2 we are increasing, and Johan will detail this, but we are increasing the possibilities of uh, connectivity to the ground, both when the airplane is on the ground, as well as when it is uh, flying. So we are increasing this communication. And we are increasing, well, before that, first of all, we are increasing uh, the data that is generated by the airplane. So the systems, because we are evolving them, they are they have more sensors, they are providing more data. So that's first. The airplane is designed to uh, generate data. We have uh, the ability to transmit this data and then the ability to interpret the data for many uh, applications. The most obvious is one that we, we already have for the current generation, which is the prognostics analysis of data. So today already on the E1, uh, the operators can identify that some components will fail in the future. I'll give an example. And a hydraulic pump, uh, before it fails, the current generation will of course, for the, for the airlines that uh, have signed our system, the AHEAD Pro, um, so using the tools this uh, system provides, they can identify that, for instance, the hydraulic pump is about to fail, uh, transforming an unscheduled event into a scheduled event. The logic is the same. The difference is that we'll have more systems and components providing data, and so we'll be able to identify more line replaceable units that will be about to fail. We'll have more, uh, let's say, opportunities to transmit that, even in flight. And we are also, let's say, beefing up our capability of analyzing this data into things that uh, today we, uh, we are still developing that maybe we still cannot anticipate. You know, with the Internet of Things and Big Data, all those fancy names. Mm -hmm. But uh, in any case, we are preparing the airplane, the connectivity to do that, and we are investing in data analysis. Uh, so, uh, yeah, so here uh, we see 
on the ground. And here we see that we can do the communication uh, in flight. Through satellites, play cars. Okay. Or VHF. Very nice. <laughs> and Wi Fi, of course, it's less expensive uh, when in the ground. So here are things that we are developing, as I said. For instance, you can imagine an airplane that is flying and the guys on the ground already preparing for a fa failure that has happened in flight so that you don't uh, cancel the next flight or you even change, I believe this, is not, this would not be as uh, frequent, but even change the route of the airplane depending on what is going on. Uh, so, as I said, the airplane is being prepared to generate the data and we are preparing ourselves to analyze this data for a series of, um, let's say, functions and value that we would add to our customers in several areas support, maintenance services, training, flight ops, and you name, name it. So all areas that we operate in customer support and services. Okay, so let's now move to the program steps. I'm happy to show this schedule because that's the same schedule we have since the beginning of the program. So I hope I'm able to show it until the end of the program. So far, so good. We're doing good in this aspect. Um, so first flight, uh, well, rollouts tomorrow. First flight, second semester this year. Uh, entry into service, first half 2018 for the 190. The 195 follows one year later, and then the 175, about the same time differences. Uh, our wings are metallic. We believe that's the best, uh, let's say, technology for this size uh, of airplane, but very automated. So manufacturing is very automated. This picture is from our metallic center of excellence in Evora with the, with the riveting robot. robot for higher efficiency and better quality. Completely, of course, the wings are completely new, so we have completely new jigs, and I believe you're going to see that uh, this afternoon. Um, we have used the last impact, which is a Seattle company, so top-notch uh, company. Automated, uh, in this picture, the robots, yeah, you see part of a robot there, but of course, this also this assembly will be automated. This uh, picture is a picture from our uh, Embraer Operators Conference that happened in October. So we had our current generation um, customers here for, for a meeting. And they were the first guys that saw the E2 in the production line. So we wanted our current customers to be the first ones to see the E2. Uh, let's, let's have a look at where our prototypes are today. So, I'm showing this uh, picture without uh, showing too much, not to spoil the rollout. But that's the first prototype, and this picture was taken during the ground vibration tests. We have finalized this test already. This is a little less than one month test, so we already concluded the certification ground vibration tests. Uh, I believe you are familiar with those tests, but these are long tests where you excite the structure to, to see what are the natural frequencies of the structure to guarantee 
the airplane is fl flutter free. Very important for the flyby wire system and so forth. So this is done, and uh, and uh, so you see the that's the the number one. You, I believe, will visit right, uh, Nicolas, in the afternoon. Now I have to. Yes, <laughs> you have to. You you can. So that's number two. So number two is um, it's a recent picture. So you have uh, wing to fuselage uh, mating. You see lots of um, systems already installed. So it is well advanced. As you know, the flight test campaign uh, is 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 made by. Uh, you know the availability of flight hours so you have to have so it's not only the first uh, flight is first flight in the good configuration and other planes following uh, relatively closely so that you you, you have uh, you, you have you produce many flight test hours so that's number two and this is number three in the so the, the fuselage is already mated for number three and so we are managing uh, to build all airplanes uh, in sequence. Uh, it's, it's one of the challenges in any development is, uh, is to do that, because um, you may uh, make the mistake of concentrating on the first plane and losing uh, time and losing the schedule of the other planes. But um, we are managing to do that, which is, which is uh, those are the flying planes, but of course we are also already building the static test uh, airplane. That's the fourth prototype. The fourth prototype is the one with the interior, so we still cannot see the interior in the production line, but we are producing already parts for the interior. Uh, let's have a look at rigs and test labs. Nor, uh, um, modern airplanes uh, first flights are normally determined by this activity here. So it's really the safe of flight uh, coming from uh, system tests, systems integration tests that will determine safe of flight and the ability to, to fly. This picture shows our uh, engineering simulator where we are developing the control laws. In this program, Embraer is designing the control laws and Embraer is writing the code of the fly-by-wire control laws. So our partner, MOOC, they manufacture the actuators, they manufacture the flight control computer hardware, and they develop the platform <coughs> software. And we, Embraer, we uh, build, we design and, and write the application software, and we do the integration of the application software with the platform software. So a lot of this work is done, first of all, in engineering simulators to develop the flight control laws, and then in the rigs to make sure the integration is working well. Uh, that's the Iron Bird, which is a key um, device where we do all this. So these are our teams. That's that's the that's the cockpit. So you have a you know a full cockpit with lots of instrumentation reading everything that is is going through, landing gears, and so this is uh, fully operational for months already. We have other rigs cabin comforts, even though we have models, we have simulations and so forth, we do build uh, a one-to-one -one, uh, cabin mock-up to make sure uh, distribution, noise are okay for our uh, air management uh, system. Pic Piccolo test lab, Piccolo is the tube that distributes hot air to the leading edges, so we have a it's also, we do have models and we do make uh, simulations and so forth, but um, our rig is, is, is good in this case. Engineering simulation, simulator, I mentioned that. 
and we have several uh, system integration test stations like this one in the program at Embraer as well as at our partners and suppliers. They're all so everything that I'm showing to you is up and running for a for a for a good time now. Uh, I said that for the 190 we had to take care of the other prototypes and the rigs. The same applies for the other members of the family. So we cannot concentrate on the 190 and not uh, move the other members of the family ahead, and that's what we're doing. So on the 195, we had uh, the first metal cut. When was that? It was uh, early, end last year, beginning this year. So December 23rd. December 23rd, so already a couple of months ago. So the 195 drawings are released, and we are starting to build the first 195. This is where we are on the program. And the 175, which is a bigger development than the 195, because the 175 has a completely new wing, pilot, engines, and landing gears. So it's, it's from the two, from uh, second and third models, the 175 is the one that is uh, most uh, different. Uh, and on the 175, we are, um, you know, finalizing basically the freeze of the design. Not yet manufacturing, but we are finalizing um, the digital mock-up, which is this uh, this picture here. So by May, the design will be will be. Okay, so now uh, I'd like to, to present you some news first time. So we will announce this in the, in, um, this afternoon, we will announce it to, to our customers. We will have an advisory board uh, this afternoon. So we announce to the customers that are participating since the beginning of the program in the advisory board. And after the, the rollout tomorrow, will make it uh, public to the, to the overall press and to the, to the world. So these are uh, very interesting news. On the 195, we introduced two important uh, modifications that once again are customer driven. So basically, we are increasing the maximum takeoff weight to improve the range. And we are increasing the span of the airplane a little bit, 1.4 meters, to improve the hot and high performance. As we evolved the design, we saw that the, the airplane had the capability you know, to do that. Uh, with very, very limited uh, impact. So basically, we are adding two tons, 2,000 kilos, to the maximum takeoff uh, weight, which will provide additional 450 nautical miles. And John later can tell you a little bit how this uh, will uh, impact you know the, the, the market success or will help the market success of the of the airplane. So the 195 that um, currently already offers more value in terms of three additional rows, 12 to 14 additional seats, now it will also offer more range than the current. So again just to to emphasize the point that the second generation <coughs> engine is much more than just uh, a more efficient uh, airplane in terms of fuel value. It adds uh, real value uh, or additional value in terms of range and capacity. 
and mental instruments. Okay, uh, so these are uh, examples in terms of the catchment area, what the airplane can do as compared, let's say, to the to the previous definition of the of the 195 from Charles de Gaulle. from Chicago. From Brasilia. From Bangkok. And on top of the maximum takeoff uh, weight increase, we have added, you know, a small bit uh, to the wing. This makes the wing of the 195 different from the wing of the 190. So now we will have three different wings in the family. So one optimized wing for each of the family members. The 175 wing being very different from the 190-195 uh, wing. And between, between the 190 and 195, there is a small difference at the wing tip, 1.4 um, additional wingspan. Okay? With that, for sure, we have a better uh, hot and high performance. So, we have picked uh, three examples here. So, from Bogota, 280 nautical miles additional range. From Denver, 250 uh, additional miles. And from Kuming, 250. So it's between 250 to 280 additional uh, range in high and hot scenarios. We believe that uh, that makes the 195, that is already a very capable airplane, makes it. Uh, an even better airplane. Mexico City, so you see important cities that are now being, um, let's say, in the catchment area of the world. And that's it. So that's uh, a quick uh, status on the program. Let's now open for, for questions.